Hey everybody, how are you doing? I know, shock of all shocks, I'm doing two videos in two different days and this one is actually going to basically be three videos. So I threw out a post this morning that said, what do you want me to cook? The very first answer to my friend Dawn, of which Renee concurred, Canadian Renee, that I do mac and cheese. So something that I miss, and sadly, for as organic and stuff as I eat, I miss Kraft macaroni and cheese because I couldn't have it as a kid because my mom made everything from scratch. So when I got in college, that's when I learned to like things like ramen noodles, ramen noodles. If you're my son, you'd be correcting me. Um, so we are going to make keto macaroni and cheese. So what we're doing is I added two large slices of bacon. And one other thing that any of you who knows me well knows that I can't stand is a microwave. I microwave the bacon. I didn't feel like it was a completely, completely trashed stove. So to that, so we've got uh, four slices of bacon that I cut in half and chopped up. To that, we're going to add about a half an onion. We're going to add four to six cups of I'm gonna say garlic, uh, cauliflower. We get that cooking. I'll rinse that out before we use that. Before we put it in the oven, we're going to use two or four small cloves of garlic because this is all I'm down to. An organic garlic does have a tendency to size a little bit smaller. And yeah, thanks, Nick. That's about how strong I am. Um, but it, I have noticed over the past few years that I've been organic for the most part that organic. Um, cauliflower isn't as big. It stays fresh, um, not quite as long as traditional as well, but I'm willing to guess, princess, I'm willing to guess that that has something to do with Monsanto pesticides and how the stuff is grown. But that's just my opinion. We're on equal playing field here. No one has to be organic just because I am. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this down a little bit until the cauliflower becomes basically kind of like fork tender. And I'm doing that on like a medium heat, medium low a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to start working on the sauce. So I put about two and a half tablespoons of butter in there first. I added the onion, the garlic, the cauliflower. We're going to let that cook. So for our cheese sauce. And because everything is better cheesier. Where to go? Um... I'm probably going to make a little bit of extra sauce. Thanks, Mr. Videographer. I really appreciate the help. <laughs> Can't help it if I forget where I put stuff. So to that, we're going to add cauliflower. Sorry, heavy whipping cream. Cream cheese. Oh, and again, you guys know that, one, I know how to write recipes. Two, I change them up all the time. And this time, I'm, the sauce is being combined with about 14 recipes I think I read today while we were on our way to go school shopping. No, I was not driving. Because if you know me, I don't do anything and drive. Um, to that, we're going to add some cheese. What's up, T? You can go. Just have a turn. What? Yeah, but we're fine. Mm -hmm. 13-year-olds, you can't, can't talk out loud. No, you can't. Okay, we don't want to burn that or scald it, so we're going to have that cook slow. And while all of this is working, we do an actually like one, two, three, kind of four different things. But the chocolate the brownie in a bowl is going to have to be the last thing, and I'm going to probably be a separate video. So we all know, no, we don't all know. I know that turmeric and ginger are two of the best anti-inflammatory um, herbs that we can use. So I use it in capsule form to take every day. I use it in um, seasoning pork, chicken, fish. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it's good in pretty much everything. So it looks like, oh, guess what? I am out. You know why I know is because I learned recently about not just turmeric and ginger, which I actually have even a ton more ginger, but I learned that 
and I knew this already, but I really didn't know how to apply it, that turmeric, if you want to burst the curcumin levels in the turmeric, you cook it with black pepper and ginger, and you get an extra boost of anti-inflammatories, helping those of us who have to live with chronic pain. Helps us a lot. Just trust me on that one, okay? So I don't have any turmeric because I used it all in that recipe that I could just scoop into stuff. Um, my sauce is starting to cook down. And I may have to add some more heavy whipping cream because what don't I use in this house, Frank? Milk. Can the camera nod? <laughs> so our cauliflower is really starting to look good. Our sauce, I really do think it's going to take some more heavy cream. Most of you that know me well, anyone who was with me when I was with Longevity or here at uh, Prove It or with Kaya or Melaleuca or Scentsy or Keep, hmm, I try not to use products that aren't organic. That goes for pasture whipping cream, eggs, you name it. If there's any substitutions that you need help with, don't ever hesitate to ask because I am... Um, just slightly neurotic about it. Oh my gosh. It's really good. It tastes nothing like crap, I can tell you that. Add a little more cheese. The reason I grate my own cheese. This is the part where I wish we could be live while I did this. This is, I'm kind of curious as to who knows why I don't use pre-grated cheese. Well, the answer is the fact that pre-grated cheese has coating on it. Um, we did, oh my God, a whole ton of school shopping today. I hate shopping, like more than anything on the planet almost. But, so we did that and stopped at uh, Chili's to get something to eat after, which again, total trade for me because we don't need out. And I looked at the cheese and guess what? Kettle's a white stuff on it. I don't even want to know what that is because Chauncey, you be quiet. You were locked up. I don't know why you're down here. Okay, so I had par-cooked the bacon beforehand. I've cooked that with some butter, some onion, and some cauliflower. Kill the heat on this one. I'm going to put this in our baking pan. Hot. No, hot. Princess, you wait. Smell that. That's good. <laughs> That's so good. Yep. So Cameraman to that, approves. say that again? Cameraman approves. Yay. All right, so to that, we're gonna top that with this lovely cheese sauce. And you can use, okay, so I used cheddar cheese and I used some Munster cheese and I just used kind of like what we had in here. So of course it's not very yellow, but at least I didn't grab, where is it? You know what I'm looking for, you sit. Little Vita? Yeah. Just say, at least you didn't grab All right, yeah. When, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> um, when I was a kid, my mom made us homemade macaroni and cheese, and that's what she used was Velveeta. All right, so we've got our cheese, our cauliflower in here. Let's top this puppy off. Some green onions. Isn't that pretty? I love pretty food. But I like to eat pretty food too. That's why when I take pictures of my plate, they're usually pretty neat. Okay, that and I made <laughs> another thing I don't really use unless I get them at Whole Foods is pork rice. I know they're great for breading, pro breading, cheap, breading meats and different things like that. It's not me, but I can tell you one thing. If my video guy can go over here and look real quick. When I'm angry, or hangry, you know how good, sorry Chance, that feels pound of pork chop for a chicken breast. So we're going to use our smashed pork rinds as our topping. Let's 
gonna be fun to clean that up after a while. A few more green onions. And let's that get going into our preheated 425 degree oven. Check it in about eight minutes or so and we'll see how we're doing. We'll set it for five. Okay, something else here that uh, I have spoken to many of you about, and we're going to be moving over here in a second because the brownie in a bowl is going to have to wait until the second video. <clears throat> um, Jello. I had a girlfriend here yesterday. Uh, Christiana, yeah, Kathy, your mom was here yesterday. And she and I were going over products that, like, what can you use? And then, like, it came up at one point last night that, what about sugar free Jello? Like, yeah, you can totally have sugar free gel. Then later on during that, the night, someone had asked me, um, she goes, you always use the highest quality ingredients. And I do. I do the best that I can to afford what I can afford when I can. So yes, do we have in our refrigerator? Sugar free jello. And can anyone tell me the very last time that they did this. <laughs> okay, so rather than doing that, hang on. My bodies are gonna like me in like two hours because I'm just stupid, but it's true, we all do that as kids. So what I'd like to do is show different options on making your own gel. Gelatin is something that is available at any major grocery store. It's actually at basically any grocery store. Um, and I was calculating it out before I was getting ready to make this to figure out how much I need. Because I didn't want it to be like eight cups of liquid to X amount of gelatin. So if my method was correct, by the time I go live with the finished product on the cupcake in a bowl or cake in a bowl, we will find out if I overdid it, underdid it, or if I made jello jigglers. You never know what's going to happen with me. Alright, so we have here our boiling water and for each, for each cat, uh, package of gelatin, we're using one cup of boiling water. We are going to mix that up until it dissolves. One of the recipes that I was looking at called for like a liquid um, syrup. Okay, to me, keto, the word syrup doesn't go, don't go in the man. Um, my husband asked me, he goes, why do you have bourbon vanilla on the counter? Well, that's going in the cake later and whatnot. Um, I have extracts that are raspberry, extracts that are lemon, Remember when her parents used to make lemon with either like celery in it or bananas? At least my mom did. Peppermint, but I like to do this in my version of a, it's called Shamrock Shake. <laughs> yeah, I'll post that video again later because that was a fun one to make. So the gelatin, I'm working on getting dissolved here. I am using Swerve, it's an organic sweetener today. Um, there are so many different sweeteners out there that you can use but all I think that you need to do is pick your poison and I'm not saying poison because the source of all these products aren't bad it's not bad for you um, I prefer organic stevia based product urethritol is something that simply balances it out and takes that bitterness out of the stevia plant I am also known for growing my own stevia, drying it, and grinding it. So here goes in about a tablespoon and a half of a swerve since it measures one for one. Keep that dissolving. Hi, hey, Chauncey. Hi, princess. Then what we're gonna do and I have never made this before. 
Oh my gosh, it smells really good. So let's start with a teaspoon. Does any of you guys that know me also, it's not gonna be right though. Let's see where we're at, because I gotta add some more water to it too still. Another teaspoon. So, so far we've got two packages of our gelatin, two boiling cups of water, two teaspoons of our extract here. That can't tip, I can't grab it. Um, and then we can start adding our cold water. This is gonna have to sit in the fridge for a couple of hours, but at some point I will eventually come back and Okay, and the perfect, okay, so you totally want to totally sneak out on your kids and make something that they don't realize is not bad for them. Put a little bit of uh, fresh beet juice. Beet juice will turn this puppy red and they won't taste it, they won't feel it, they won't know it's there, but it won't be bad for them either. Make sure the flavor's good. But it's good. <laughs> He's laughing at me. However, um, the person who's taken this video likes food would be a heck of a lot sweeter than what I just did. So rather than swerve, since we don't have it hot anymore, we'll use a little bit of the Skinny Girl Stevia. Which is called potty. Um, score, way better. All right, so we put. Wow, that is really good. I don't even think it's gonna need the ready bar. But for me, my preference would be to use some heavy cream and then whip that separate. I'll let you know when this is done. Oh. Don't you love it when the person that's doing the cooking says, oh crap, it's usually not a good sign. All right, let's take a look at our mac and cheese. Yep. Looks divine. Well, I shouldn't say divine because I'm not cooking. But all right, Carla and Don, as per your request, a couple spoons here. All right, we're gonna have our videographer taste it first. Chicken. Mm -hmm. I am. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Looks good though. The cauliflower feels al dente. The pork rinds. Looks like it's going to give the crunch I want. <laughs> you know, I now know why Giada on Food Network actually continues to talk same thing with Rachel Ray while they're true because when you take a sample of something why do you keep staring at me um as you know it's really hard or I just have to learn to text them all bite seconds but this is outstanding it could be a great side dish we heat well because it's not noodles it's uh, cauliflower um in fact I'll even take another bite that's his so I am going to get working on our next product, which is going to be a chocolate cake fudgy thingamajiggy in a bowl. And once I have everything prepped for that, we'll go back on and record a video. So have a great day. Talk to you soon. And actually, I'll be right back. Bye.